a critical history of english literature the restoration period john wilmont earl of rochester in 1647 to 80 a wit and rake of the first rank sir george etheridge and william wycherley two of the most important restoration dramatist were the members of the court circle of wits and wrote to amuse themselves in etheridge the man of the mode the supreme test of dorimant's love for harriet in his willingness to follow her into the country as in wycher is the country wife the puritan government has stopped the performance of plays in september 1642 william devonant received the permission to give some private dramatic performance a thread created in a character like dorimant in the man of the moat the most perfect restoration comedies congress the way of the world was first produced in 1700 15 years after the death of charles ii in terms of dramatic influence the elizabethan strain was much strong or restoration comedy ben johnson was the strongest influence and though johnson's comedy of humors The first accomplished practitioner of the restoration comedy of manners was Sir George Etheridge in 1634. Etheridge's first play, The Comical Revenge or Love in a Tub, was performed in 1664. Etheridge's first play, The Comical Revenge or Love in a Tub, was performed in 1664. His next play she would if she could George Etheridge next play she would if she could performed in 1668 The two honest gentlemen of the town who represent the male wit and sophistication in the play The man of the mood or sir popling flutter the man of the moat has also subtitled sir popling flutter produced in 1676 is a thread's last and most brilliant comedy in the way of the world of congruence dialogue between the milament and mirabel in Congreve's way of the world is famous. William Wycherley's produces four four comedies between sixteen seventy one and sixteen seventy six. Most interesting of them are the last two, the Country Wife and Plain Dealer. Widow Blacker in the Plain Dealer character character such a character as a widow Blacker in the Plain Dealer Plain Dealer is a caricature of the litigious amateur of law who is gulled in the end of some of the Johnsonian manner. feeling in that play in some times of that of whole fun of ben johnson whereas the plain dealer which was probably written before the country by but revised before performance and later publication as the last of his plays he is obviously suggested by the acclastic of molirius misanthropy The Country Wife is a more coherent and polished play. Mr. Pinch Wife has married a country girl and bringing her to London. He tries in his jealousy to keep her from contact with the gallants of the town 
and Mr. Horner manages to Mrs. Pinch wife too, to win if not her love. For there is no love in a play, her physical desire. Vicharly's prose is rapid and colloquial, but his overtones of the extra vagans of Johnson's whole poem or the alchemist, as well as bounds of violence of exaggeration. John Dryden, who knew so well how to adapt himself to the varying models of his time. Restoration, wit and immorality. And in Dryden, it is immorality rather than a morality because it does not spring from a native eagerness of outlook but from determination to be smunt is in fashion. It is strange and hardly successful dramatic mixture the wild gallant, the rival ladies, secret love, Sir Martin Mar all, the last deriving from Molyneux Lee et Aurdi. Et Aurdi. Uh, all have some elements of the restoration comedy of manners. Dryden's most successful essay in the restoration comedy of manners in his marriage. De La Motte, first produced in 1672. Dryden's career as a writer of comedy is a relatively unimportant part of his career as a poet and man of letters. His friend Congreve, 1672-1799, period of Congreve, as Dryden well knew, was the real master of his mode in his words to my dear friend, Mr. Congre on his comedy called The Double Dealer. Dryden expressed admiration for Congre as a comic dramatist. Not all Congreve's comedies are higher in the true restoration mode. The Old Bachelor, first produced in 1693, combines fairer satires and Johnson's humor as an atmosphere than often seems as much Elizabethan as restoration. Love for Love, produced in 1695. As in many respects, more reminds of Johnsonian comedy of humors than restoration comedy of manners. Mr. Tattle teaches Pew, the country girl, the importance of saving one thing, doing another brings into open the contrast between public reputation and private behavior, which is implicit in so many of the restoration wit combats love for love is the most satirical of our Congress play, play. In the prologue, Congress deliberately started his intention of lashing the age. The way of the world produced since 1700 was Congress' last and finest comedy. Hero and the heroine Mirabel and Milament in the way of the world. The way of the world represents the fine flower of re restoration comedy, blooming a generation and more after the society which first bred it had passed away. Sir John Van Brook's comedies, the relapse. Relapse in 1696. The Provoked Wife in 1697 and The Unfinished Journey to London show his restoration comic mode breaking down.
the provoked wife is has some strong scene especially the where sir john and lady brit reveal their mutual antipathy but this very strength is more elizabethan than restoration elizabethan and jacobean comedy in others looks forward to the sentimental comedy of the 18th century with george hocker parker In sixteen seventy eight to seventeen seven, English comedy moved still further away from the Restoration idol. The relation between the reputation and money in the Bjork Stratagem in seventeen seven, his last and best play, Bjork Stratagem. Jeremy Collier's short view of the immortality and profaneness of the English stage. Jeremy Collier's short view of the immortality and profaneness of the English stage, which appeared in sixteen ninety eight. Collier Shivas was just already developing a more sentimental comedy in the nineteen sixteen nineties. One was the relapse. was written in an ironic sequel of Seaver's Love's Last Ship or The Pool of Fashion in 1696 Sir uh, Charles Sidley Thomas Sadwell John Crowning Thomas D Woodfrey and the irresponsible irresponsible mrs apraven some of the whose plates combine the influence of banished comedy of interview with pure farce dryden's aurangzeb as went to ethres man of the moat produced the following year ethres play audience wanted to recognize themselves in dryden's to be thrilled by world Ed Buckingham's ridicule of the species in the recursal in sixteen seventy one so clearly shows Buckingham's ridicule of the species in the re, sorry real cell Buckingham's real cell in sixteen seventy one so. one of the most important critical do- documents of the heroic play in the essay on heroic plays which dryden wrote prefaced to the conquest of granada sir robert hort and dryden himself first popularized the heroic tragedy the dryden was the most successful practitioner george cartwright in his play the heroic lovers published in 1661 pioneered the species roger boyle earl of ore was another early heroic dramatist the indian queen acted in 1664 and cleomenes 1692 he produced a large number of heroic tragedies tragedies which for structural neatness and complexity the indian emperor acted in 1665 a spectacular and ingeniously wrote drama is sometimes preposterous in both in fashions and its situations tyrannic law or the royal martyr In sixteen sixty nine, stirred with high diplomatic speeches, which form are the hallmark of heroic play. The conquest of Granada in sixteen seventeen, the Aurangzeb in sixteen seventy five. Though they two dealt in what are they now standard passions and conflict to do with such richness of plots. Nathan Nathanael Lee. was the most successful writer of this kind of play after dryden no other writer of heroic tragedies and they include much more figures as john crowning thomas southerning who wrote the blank verse and mingled the sentimental and moral with the heroic elna 
Settle, Thomas T. Urfre contributed any work of real literary significance. Otwage, Don Carlos, Prince of Spain, is a lively and craftsman like example of Pesis, but Otwage's great, greatest success was somewhat different kind of tragedy. <coughs> Number of tragedies. Number of restoration tragedies and sometimes gave them a ton of feeling very unlike of the character in heroic play Dryden's All for Love in 1677 is rewriting of Shakespeare's Antonia and Cleopatra with the whole theme narrowed down and concentrated on the conflict between the love and honor. All for Love shares with the most heroic play with the simplification of, of psychology and interest of emotional conflict. Elizabethan in another way later tragedy of Thomas Otway, the orphan, is a pathetic rather than tragic. The blank verse is decidedly featured in and there are so and there also uh, of Webster and others, Otway's masterpiece is Venice Pursuit in 1682 was also written in blank verse. Venice Preserved, sorry, Otway's masterpiece is Venice Preserved in 1682 was also written in blank verse. Congress, the Morning Bride, acted in 1697, was obvious echoes of Ford and Webster, and it is written in blank verse. Nicholas Rowe, 1674 to 1718, modulate heroic action to a more Domestic, plain, and sentimentally, that results is not featured and stylization of fashion. Rupin's reflexes are the poetic. Rapin's reflexes are la poetic in 1672, together with. Volume's Lee Art Poetry Cube in 1674 represent for English as well as for French critics the combination. In Dryden's essay of dramatic poetry claims that the other writers can produce nothing so courtly read or which express so much the conversation of gentlemen. Sir John Deham and Edmund Weller, of whom was in sense of great poet for each of whom was influential establishing the new poetic ideal. Deham's most influential work as descriptive poem, Cooper's Hill, which Dryden called an exact pattern of good writing. A uh, discursive poem in heroic couplets, Cooper Hill combines description of landscape with historical and moral reactions in the doing so founded a passage of descriptive poem founded in Pope in his Windsor forest or underwent variously modification as John Dyer's John Dyer's George Gronger Hill. Throughout the 18th century, to become eventually one of the ancestors of the poetry of natural description, linked with the meditation which culminates in the Wordsworth Tintern Abbey, Dr. Jensen called the pages founded by Dehnam, local poetry of which fundamental subject is some particular landscape to be poetically described with the addition of the establishment as may be supplied by historical restoration or incidental meditation. 
द सोसायटी फिलॉसॉफिकल ट्रान्सॅक्शन्स फर्स्ट बिगॅन टू एपियर इन सिक्स्टीन सिक्स्टी फाय स्टाईल ऑफ सर थॉमस ब्राऊनी अँड बिशॉफ स्प्राट्स हिस्ट्री ऑफ द रॉयल सोसायटी इन सिक्स्टीन सिक्स्टी सेवन वॉज एक्झॅम्प्लिफाईड अँड रिकमेंडेड अ प्लेनर प्रोज स्टाईल विच इज सीन इन डिफरंट वेज द कॉवलीज एसेज इन द मिचलिस मिस सॅलिनियस रायटिंग ऑफ जॉर्ज सॅविल मॉर्किस ऑफ हॉलीफॉक्स इन द सर्मन्स ऑफ अर्च अर्च बिशप टिलॉटसन and in dryden's essays scientist cavalier citizens and professional writer made the royal society in whose preceding charles second took an interest and whose members included not only robert boyle and isaac newton but also john dryden john evelyn and samuel pepys and the fact that his history was written by bishop illustrates the part and anglican clergy we are now playing in the intellectual life of the country the difference between the style of jeremy taylor and the bishop spratt like the between the sermons of lancelot andrew andrews and the, those of john tillerstons as significant as the difference in content attitude the great empirical philosopher john locke the title of tolland's Tull- book christianity not mysterious clearly proclaimed john dryden in 1631 to 700 is the great poet of the age of his age restoration age who built on the reform of our numbers achieved by Dehnam to perfect poetic style. Landmarks in the history of English poetry. Dr. Johnson looking back in the late 70s, Dryden was the founded in the new versification from its time. There was Johnson remark before the time Dryden no poetical diction no system of words at once refined from the grossness of d- dramatic use the heroic stanzas on the death of Oliver Cromwell his uh, heroic drama heroic drama on the death of Oliver Cromwell of poetic conceits His heroic tangents of the death of Oliver Cromwell is written in quatrains with the alternating rhyme of form of words to be got from Sir William Davenant's Gondibert in 1651. Thomas, its ringing lines. Dryden welcomed the restoration of Charles II with the Austria Redux. Ostra Redux, a poem heroic couplets in which such a poet devises similes and metaphors. Devonant's Gondi Hurt, a romantic epic. Gondibert, a romantic epic written in the same stanza, has precipitated much discussion of nature and scope of heroic poetry. Dryden found his proper kind of wit in satirical verse. Heroic phase of his literary career which put into the preface to Troilus and Cressity in 1679. Dryden first approached his true style as an punegirist. He was a master of horse accompaniment. To the Lady Castleman shows 
the ability to use the couplets to track out the ringing complimentary phrase to my dear friend mr kongri on both the comedy called the double dealer which is quoted on pages 15 44 the control horation assurance of to my husband to sorry to my honored kinsman john dryden written in 1699 the year before his death the memory of mr oldham the poem dryden's elegy are less numerous than the poems of compliment to the living the most them one of his finest occasional pieces the poem to the memory of mr oldham here for once dryden almost transcend the necessary limits of his kind of good verse to achieve a note of sadness of desire that is more often has associated with victorian poets at the control of dignity john oldham died at the age of 29 and the poem is a lament for untimely the death dryden greatest achievement was his satirical argumentative verse absalom and achitophel was a contribution to debate on public affairs from the form of verse satire dryden had been a poet laureate and historiographer royal since his 1670 but the apart from the fact that had official position is reason is sects were all on the side of legitimism and settled government so that weak agitation to exclude from the succession to the throne charles second's heir and brother james on the grounds that he was a roman catholic and to encourage charles illegitimate son to the duke of manmouth to assert his claim found dryden on the troy side Ryan we both parties at that time supporting legality and the true succession protestant whig agitation in favor of the exclusion of james duke of york from the succession of led by the earl of shaftesbury shaftesbury and duke of buckingh buckingham the latter whom had in 1671 in the mocking play the real sel ridicule the extra hegens of heroic drama the satirized dryden has mr bites dryden took the biblical story of the rebellion of absalom against the father king david and applied to the contemporary situation with charles has the king david and shaftesbury has achitophel absalom's chief adviser until in the end his advice was rejected and hanged himself manmouth has absalom and beckingham has jimri a name dryden took from king first 16 where jimri figures as the slaver of king uh, elaha of israel and man who did evil in the sight of the lord and made israel to sin consider the famous portrait of shaftesbury achitophel there is a touch of pilton satin in achitophel when dryden puts into his mouth brilliantly plausible speech in which her pursued absalom to rebellion we were remind the temptation of you dryden's portrait of the duke of buckingham as jimri is a uh, reply to buckingham portrait of himself mr bice in the achit in the real sir is much chef's brevet to less complex and balanced the description of manmouth as absalom counting the people in done with a character mixture of admiration of the virtuously displayed contempt in the actual deed Absalom and Achitophel appeared about a week before Shaftesbury was tried on the charge of high treason 
and caused tremendous excitement. Sarduri was uh, acquitted and to celebrate the victory, the Vix struck a medal. They gave Dryden another opportunity and in 1682 he published the medal. The more single-minded and more savage attack on Shaftesbury. The medal was answered by Thomas Sadwell's Medal of the John Bites, a course of brutal work beside which Dryden's attack on Shaftesbury has a politeness itself. Dryden took his revenge on Shadwell in the finest of shorter satirical poems, MacFlacknow, in 1682. Dryden did not reply in his kind. MacFlacknow a genial poem in which Shadwell is treated with a humorous content. Richard Flacknow was an Irish priest who mistakenly considered himself a poet. Andrew Marvell as Richard Flacknow in Rome written a mocking poem about him. Flecno, an English priest at Rome. Flecno was dead by the time Dryden wrote his poem, but his name remained as a symbol of bad poetry. The theme of Mac Flecno is the choice of Shadwell by Flecno as his heir. Mac Flecno, for example, son of Flecno and the successor of the kingdom of nonsense and dullness in prose was Plapno's announcement of Shadwell's preeminent fitness of succeed to the throne of empire of dullness and all the realism of nonsense. The humorous shock of such lines as who stand confirmed in full stupidity. Part 2 of Absalom and Achetapal of which Dryden only wrote 200 of the 1140 lines, 200 of the 1140 lines is a less interested, is a bulk being by Nahum Tate is a less interest in than part one and on the whole more simply Shadwell reappears here in organization and portrayed by the Dryden with calculated disgust. That of first part of Absalom and Achetopel of MacFlacknor further on Dryden has some good fun with Shadwell's double crime of treason and dullness. Dryden's satirical character catches as Absalom and Achitophel was elsewhere owed a discourse covering of original in the progress of satire which has prepared to her translation of Juvenile in 1693. The character of Jimri in my Absalom, Absalom is my opinion worth the whole poem. It is not a bloody, it is a ridiculous enough. With Religio Lacy, published late in 16, Religio Lacy of Dryden, published late in 1682, Dryden established himself as the master of verse argument. This poem of Religio Lacy, this poem of 456 lines in heroic couplets, is a discourse on religion. Religio Lacy opens with a statement of the inadequacy of reason expressed in couplets as effectively right in movement as Dryden ever wrote. Dryden joined the Church of Rome in 1686. Dryden's conversation to Roman Catholicism has often been regarded as mere self-interest in James II. A Catholic king had ascended the throne on the death of Charles II in 1685. James was uh, uh, repudiated by the people and William of Orange and his wife Mary, James' daughter, brought into the restore the pro Protestant succession and guaranteed it in future. Dryden had to give up his position as poet laureate and historiographer Royal, he stuck to his new religion in a period of strong anti-Catholic feeling. 
spent the last 11 years of his life in relative poverty dryden was always anti clerical and temperament was not only religious it was the basic skepticism that led him to religion dryden second poem of religious discussion written in the defend the roman catholic position is more argumentative than religious lacy the hind and the panther in 1687 was a contribution to a deliberate that was ringing throughout the nation the best people people in hind being a roman catholic church and the panther the best of the best of prey the church of england the religion sects are represented by other animals for example bear represent the independent independent the whole the press bre presbyterians the hare the quakers the app the free thinkers do dryden expands considered in gitty and translating the religious situation into animal terms the pebble soon gives way to argument he goes on attack on the in initiative holp the prestibarians prestibitarians the wild beast who wear the laying britain west he then comes to the panther the hind recently encouraged by the lion lion means king james second the uh, there follows a conversation between the hind and the panther which occupies book second the turn which is dried and tells the close of book first of the permanently conversation between two animals reveal the ease with which he could move half humorous verse with strong colloquial or touch to more serious matters at the end of the part second the panther is given hospitality in the hind's humble home part third opens with a brief apology by dryden for using the beast fable he said issue isof and spencer has a precedents then the argument between the hind and the panther continues the with descriptive or interlude describe the psychological effect of different points of the animal and the other panther story of the shallows and the martin which refers to the situation of english catholics at the time many of the detailed points made by animals refer to the contemporary history at the end the hint tells the panther an elaborate fable full of oblique reference to the political situation of the time designed to warn the panther of the dangers of her position panther remains uh, unconscious and both retire to rest the position maintained by dryden the hind arguments was professor bread holt he is uh, consciously demonstrated that of the moderate english catholics who were the far from happy uh, about king james gill means enthusiastic for promoting their cause for their fiat The Hind and the Panther Dryden gave expression more elaborating and in greater detail than anywhere to his consideration in religion and politics. Virgil's Aeneid and Pastorals, parts of the Iliad, parts of Lucretius and Ovid's Epistles, Metamorphoses and Tales from Boccaccio and Chaucer, these were the published in various miscellaneous and collection of poems between 1684 and 1711 his translation of very uneven the french have set up a purity for the standard of their language his fables published in 1700 the the year of his death contain his uh, renderings from chaucer and boccaccio then include some of his most vigorous narrative 
the human hair is a tendency to heighten the language to give rhetorical gloss of simple statement is often in evidence mark van doren had pointed out that for one word in chaucer hunt, hunting dryden has in his palamon and arsait chaucer's night nice tale four lines generalize elaborations chaucer's wife was tells opens in old days of the king arthur the pastoral characters such as amitus demon phylis selimena alexis abounded in these songs many of which have a combination of neoclassic artist contemporary vulgarity which was to mark kind of english lyric poetry well into the 18th century he wrote several operas as saint evermont not interpretably described that sort of opera where attempt to imitate or follow musical line is not often successful they include the state of innocence a uh, vigorously rhetorical rewriting of milton's paradox last of all the pieces he wrote for stage represented with music the secular mosque written for benefit performance at the theater royal only a few weeks before his death Dryden's attempt to imitate effects of music language reached the height in his two songs by Saint Cecilia's Day. The first, called simply a song for Saint Cecilia's Day in 1687, the second, Alex Anders Fist or the Power of Music, Power of Music in 1697, poems in praise of music of Saint Cecilia's Day had. become a fashion in his 17th century he is a two hour display virtuosity like nothing else of their kind the they were intended to be pindaric in structure and dryden has to has so many contemporaries of pindaric ode was a model of the liberate wildness where the meter and the tanza from her continuously change to fit shifts in the broad and thought sorry in the thought and emotions cowley's pindaric odes are among the worst pieces formless extravagant verbiage which is later recognized and imitated by ben johnson among others the uh, he wrote in his preface to collection of missel missellen selenius poems entitled silvai in 1685 without the nicety of this alexander fist shows the effect of different kinds of music alexander the great enables dryden to run the gamut of modes from the military to the tender it is a fine bravery pieces Dryden's first achievement in his pindaric manner is in either musical ode, but his ode to the pious memory of the accomplished young lady, Mrs. Annie Killigrew, in 1686, in spite of several barren pieces of his poems, true rhetorical splendor. Dryden's first important critical work was his essay of dramatic poetry in 1668. Ninder means Dryder defended the English against the French. Liveliness is then old formally. Johnson's play Epicoin, Epicoini or the Silent Woman, one of the first detailed pieces of practical criticism in english ben johnson's play epicoini or the silent woman one of the first detailed piece of practical criticism in english defense of dramatic 
defense of on essay of dramatic poetry was included in the second edition of his play the indian emperor in 1668 is prepared to an evening law discuss the comedy farce and tragedy his essay of heroic plays prefix to the conquest to the granada in 1672 his essay on the dramatic poetry of the last age appeared in the same year with the second part of the same play an apology for heroic poetry and poetic license was prefixed to the state of innocence in 1677 the preface of all for love in 1678 discussed the nature of tragedy in the own intention in his writing the play His essay on the grounds of criticism in tragedy was the preface to Troilus and Cressida in 1679. His preface to a volume of translation from Ovid in 1680 discussed Ovid and the art of transla- translation. The preface to the fables in Dryden's last and most relaxed piece of critical writing. Translating Homer, Virgil, Ovid, Chaucer, Boccaccio. This was a Samuel Butterall. Dryden had been a horror satirist in Restoration England by a writer of a very different kind. In spite of a certain similarities of cost of mind, this was a Samuel Butterall in 1612 to 80, which Hundi Brass is a, perhaps the first great poetic satire in English. the burlesque romance of which first part appeared in 1663 the second in uh, 1664 the third in 1678 was deliberately accompanied at the court of charles ii as a brilliant attack on the puritans further the Don Quixote and Pereira also from Scarian's liberating mockery of the Aeneid the Virgil Andibras is also literary satire of Samuel Butler Arthur Dance the plain man's parchway to heaven first published in 161 running into the runner runners uh, running into humorous editions throughout the 17th century the richard burtart's prose allegory about the the idol of man published in 1676 it reached in 12th edition in 1648 to the culmination of this kind of literature in the work of bunyan john bunyan in 1628 to 88 so the generation of puritan preaching could help to develop a prose style bunyan spiritual autobiography grace abounding to the chief of sinners in 1666 was a traditional puritan mode which flourished especially between 1640 to 1660 The Pilgrim's Progress take the archetypal theme of man's life in journey of trace of which and journey from the city of destruction to salvation and heaven with raciness and colors. The Holy War in 1682 take the other great archetypal allegory. The Pilgrim proves that uh, while Bunyan used his experiential life of brilliantly Tilliard who makes his, this criticism also asserts the holy of war as a better than any other road to be called England's puritan epic the second part of the pilgrim progress deals with the pilgrimage of christian wife christian and her children from the city of destruction to salvation the diaries of john evelyn and samuel pepys shows the kinds of autobiographical writing were different from the pieces of spiritual autobiography represented by Bunyan great Bunyan's grace grace abounding Evelyn was a cultivated gentleman of wide curiosity who was a young man traveled in France and Italy as well as in England 
the essay on miscellaneous writing in sir william temple and george chevalier first marquis of halifax in 1633 to 95 reveal others aspect of gentlemanly character in the of the period the temple like cowley which essay of myself published posthumously with the other essay in 1668 is one of the first truly really confessional short pieces of prose in english halifax a somewhat more worldly character than a temple halifax hali Hex, uh, a somewhat more worldly character than Temple, is best known for his character of a dreamer, in which a uh, ex- expatiate on a letter come to be uh, regarded as a traditional English political virtues of compromises, the lady of New Year gift, or the advice to a daughter, Halifax, and more per- particularly Temple reveal at another side of English thought and sensibility. The conclusion of Temple essays on poetry in 1690 shows a world thought of feeling very far from that of what at same being poet by contemporary William Congreve. If you like my video, please like, share, and subscribe it.